break through the binding power of sin, break through the binding power of, of death. So as long as you have the Holy Spirit, right, you can overcome sin, you can overcome death. So whenever you die, death cannot continue, you will be resurrected one day. Huh? So, so all the key that, you know, the key for us to live a sanctified life is, is really Holy Spirit. Huh? Uh, verse, verse 3, continue reading. Verse 3, for what the law was powerless to do in God, he was weakened by the sinful nature. God did it, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful men to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful men. So God become a flesh, yeah, and take the sin for us, huh? And then I mean, we can be, uh, we can have salvation. Verse 4. Verse 4. In order that the righteous requirements of the Lord might, might be fulfilled, but be fully meet in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. So all the righteousness of the law before cannot be fulfilled, but uh, now can be fulfilled by those who follow Spirit and those who are under the grace. We are able to do it. Uh, that is, that is uh, the grace of God. That is. Uh, if we obtain faith, uh, live by faith, we are able to obtain this. Uh, this is very powerful. So Jesus Christ do everything for us. Jesus Christ has no sin. I know some of you are, or many of you are, read uh, the Vinci Code, right? We talked about it already. Uh, you know, the Vinci Code, a lot of things is, is, is fed, describe a lot of things that are fed. But the basic call gives you the wrong conclusion. Very dangerous book, yeah? You gotta be, uh, you gotta be able to tell what's wrong with this book, even though it's very famous, yeah? Who is the Vinci? The painter. He painted the, the picture of the Last Supper. People are saying that if you read the picture of Last Supper carefully, who is beside, uh, among the two apostles, one of them is who? Who? Mary, Mary. Mary or Magdalene, standing by Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's what Darwin see. That's what that's what they says that uh, Darwin see implied that you know uh, um, Mary or Magdalene is the wife of Jesus Christ, right? Now, if you ask non non believer, they, they, they will not they they will think that Jesus is a married man. His wife is Mary. Is it true? No. This is this is not biblical at all. But Tabunsi, people are saying that Tabunsi give this kind of hinting in his painting. And, and this book, uh, this book, yeah? If you agree with whatever this book says, Jesus is not a holy man. Jesus cannot die for you. Because in this book, they talk about, um, you know, Jesus is from Jesus' descendants. And the descendants nowadays was protected by some people somewhere in Europe. Huh? And those, those group of people agree, uh, agree with uh, quote unquote, Sun Hun. You read the English version, what is Sun Hun in English? There's a term. Huh? What is Sun Hun? Holy matrimony, yeah? Uh, they says that, you know, if when the springtime comes, you know, you, you read the book of Acts, yeah? The, how they wash the idol. They, Sit down and eat and drink. Get up and have fun. Yeah, this is like a, this is like part of someone is like you know they will get together and, and I don't want to say the, those kind of words over here, but their proclamation is that you know through uh, those kind of group. They were, they were, in the springtime, the first day of springtime, they will get together, yeah? And they will... <laughs> fornication, yes, that's good. They will commit fornication in front of people. Everybody will mask, yeah? Mask. And they do know who you are and commit fornication. And they think that through this kind of uh, evil stuff, 
people is able to see God. In the excitement of evil stuff, people is able to see God. And, and this is performed by those who protect the descendants of Jesus Christ. It implies that Jesus Christ is grieved for this kind of ceremony. And when you read these books, right, there, were, there are a lot of fat hidden in it, for example. Indeed, in this world, there are books of Tam, uh, Gospel of Thomas. There are Gospel of Philips, yeah? Mm -hmm. It is true, yeah? Now, the Holy Bible only collect Gospel of Mark, Gospel of John, no, no, Gospel no. of Matthew, yeah? But in the society, there are Gospel of what? Um, Other Gospels uh, of Apostles. But people think that maybe those books are, like for example, Gospel of Thomas and Gospel of Philips, huh? may not be written by Philip or Thomas themselves. It's like hundreds of years later, people use their name to write Gospels. That's why they are not collected as part of canon. Canon. What is canon? Canon. 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 C A N N O N. What, what is canon? Doctrine. Right? Canon is Zhengdian. How do you say Zhengdian in English? Canon. <laughs> well, what is the What is the other thing for you? Doctrine. Doctrine, right? Do huh? Do do what? Doctrine. Doctrine. Well, anyway, so, 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 so those books are collected to become canon because, for example, you write Paul's later, right? Paul says that I, I signed with my signature, yeah? In those other books, we call it Weijin. Uh, How do you say Weijin again? <laughs> Apocrypha. There are other apocrypha that is collected as Canaan. And Da Vinci, da Vinci Code, this book says that they try to make the apocrypha, apocrypha become Canaan and try to prove that the Canaan is apocrypha. Right? Anyway, uh, this is the, if you read Da Vinci Code, I hope you, you, you can dis distinguish that. If you agree with the author's view, then guess what? Jesus cannot die for you because he will be a sinner. That's my conclusion. Oh. So it, this book is very interesting. A lot of facts inside, but the conclusion is totally anti-Christ to me. So you have to be very careful. Because over here it says that Jesus become a sinner and die for us and fulfill, fulfill the law. Uh, so the law of righteousness. If, uh, I can come to us. If you do not, if you say that believe in Jesus, yeah? All you need to do is raise your hand. Actually, you abolish the law. You did not fulfill the law. No one to say. Because if you simply raise your hand to say you believe already, then the blood is not involved in these processes. There was there is no water baptism, there is no blood involved. Therefore, you gotta go through form of water and form of Holy Spirit. Then the law has been fulfilled. The righteousness, the righteousness of law can come to you. If you simply raise your hand, you modify the law, you abolish the law, the righteousness of the law cannot come to you. You understand what I'm saying? Can I understood? Oh. <laughs> very, very important. No? So, the key word to live in the new generation yeah, is truly that you pray for the fullness of the Holy Spirit. No? Really, the Holy Spirit can set you up. Uh, Romans chapter 8 talk about uh, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's read some verses about the uh, Holy Spirit. Yeah? Um, please read um, chapter, five, verse, chapter 8 verse 5. 5 and 6. Amen. Amen. So please read. Six, come on, please. The mind of the is dead, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. Six. Oh, you're done. Sorry. So, uh, if you, if we mind our flesh, the consequence is death. If our mind is set up with Holy Spirit, the consequence is eternity. Oh, this is power of Holy Spirit, yeah? Let's turn to another, let's read another one. Verse, we read it before, huh? 
Verse 8 and 9. Um, stand. Verse 8. 9. Let's jump to 11. Let's read verse 8, 16. So you can see, if you close the Bible, you can remember what is the, what does Holy Spirit do to us, right? Holy Spirit make us to become the Son of God. Holy Spirit make us to, uh, uh, to what? To give us eternal life. If you rely on the Holy Spirit, if Holy Spirit, uh, uh, you have Holy Spirit, you do not belong to flesh, you belong to the Spirit already. Then you belong to Christ. Uh, and in the last day, Holy Spirit will raise your body into a spiritual body. Uh, and all this are from our Lord Jesus Christ. All this you are able to obtain through faith. Uh, so, uh, so that's why we shall live under the grace, not under the law. What is system? Some people give an uh, analogy, huh? Like uh, you, you, you play, you play, you play baseball, yeah? You play baseball. If anybody only pays attention to the law, I see his eyes always focus on the base, yeah? Because you like to have the righteousness of the law, so you want to go on the base, yeah? Because you, you want righteousness. But you will forget to focus on the ball. The ball is just like, you know, refer to Jesus Christ or Holy Spirit, yeah? But your eyes are focused on Jesus Christ. You, it's easy, you can hit the ball, you can go on to the base. If you only focus on the base, you are not able to hit the ball. The same thing. Even though you are able to memorize Ten Commandments, yeah? Maybe upside down, you can memorize from the number 10 to number 1. I believe many of you can do that, right? You memorize 100 times a day. Does it guarantee you that you can keep Ten Commandments? But if you press 100 times a day, do you think that you have more power to help you to abide Ten Commandments? I think so, right? So, in, a, in, a, in experience over here, you, it's easy for you to understand. Yes, law, you got to understand. you got to memorize it because it can help you to know what is right and what is wrong. But knowing is different from having power. So let us focus on the ball, not on the best. Let us focus on Jesus Christ, His Holy Spirit, not on the law, only. Huh? So let us live under the grace, not under the law. If you live under the grace, focus on Holy Spirit, cultivation, very simple. Life will become easier. So you know what is, the pro what is our problem? Our problem is that really we do not pray enough every day. We, we do not pray enough. If you, you tell yourself, if you truly pray enough in your daily life, right? No problem. Holy Spirit will brief you if you do not do good. Holy Spirit will, you know, if you do something wrong against your mother, right? Will urge you to say sorry to your mom before you are able to go to sleep. Is it true? I think I, I bear this testimony, and this is true one, huh? This is true one. Really, all, all you need to do is pray. I see a, a brother has a problem with that. Uh, with his, his mind, carnal. Actually, he falls into temptation. He has a wrong relationship. You know, and it's only like, uh, only through email, yeah? They, they, are very, they are very close mentally already, this brother, with this system. But it was a wrong relationship. Huh? It's simply wrong in the eyes of God. I won't give you detail, right? And this brother, pray, pray, pray every day, yeah? Something the Lord tell him that, you know, you've got to, you've got to, and this, you know, wrong mental relationship. When he was driving in the car, Holy Spirit moved him that he cannot drive straight anymore. His, his, his head was shaken. Night time, Holy Spirit wake him up. You gotta make determination. Just, just, just get rid of this relationship. Yeah. So it is all by the power of Holy Spirit. They learn he had that kind of determination because if he cannot give up, he really cannot drive well anymore because the power is so much, grief him so much. You can't, you know, end it. For, Totally, yeah? Do not leave anything behind. So you want to be a good person, it is not your power. It is when you pray, the Lord will empower you. That's why Paul says that, you know, God, it is God who enable him to be a good man, that he was able to be a good man. This is so. 
we shall live under the grace, relying on the Holy Spirit, not only reciting the law alone. Of course, the law is important. But the more important is Jesus Christ. He is the fulfillment of the law. Let's read another verse. Romans chapter 8, Genesis chapter 10. To conclude uh, this lesson, huh? verse 4. Chapter 10, verse 4. Uh, Aaron, please read. Aaron. The Christ is the end of law. If you, many other churches uh, explain this verse as the Christ is the terminator of the law. Meaning that, you know, as long as you believe in Christ, right, the law is, is you, 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 don't, you can be abolished uh, to us. No, the end of the law means that the, the law leads to Jesus Christ. The law, the law, our Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. And the law leads to Jesus Christ is the meaning of the end. No? Doesn't mean the law totally, uh, the spirit is totally uh, not me, but the spirit is still there for us to apply. Okay, uh, and this, uh, this control, uh, this uh, topic. Huh? Now we just mentioned about this morning. <coughs> with faith we can be justified. With faith we can be sanctified. Huh? And now we're talking about with faith we can be glorified. Huh? This is uh, basically this is recorded in chapter nine, uh, chapter eight, and chapter, chapter eight on the later part of chapter eight. What is the purpose for for you to believe in Jesus Christ? Answer. What do you think? Huh? Did you ask me what's the purpose of the Christ? Yeah. Can be saved, yeah? We can have uh, future eternity, can't? Yeah? Thank you. Jesus, uh, but I think the two things uh, for us to believe in Jesus Christ is that number one, uh, we have peace in this world. Number two, we can have salvation in the future. So, um, before Jesus Christ called to heaven, Jesus Christ asked for glory. That is heavenly glory. When Jesus was working on earth, right, he, knelt, he seldom seek for his own glory. But before he died, he said, Lord, give me the glory that you prepared for me now. Let's turn to John chapter 17. John 17. <laughs> 17, verse 1. This is very odd because Jesus never asked for glory prior to this time. Oh. Verse 1. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. The hour has come. He's going to die on earth. When you, before you die, really, you want to ask God, God, please give me your glory. Before Paul died, Paul says that there's a crown of glory waiting for me. Because glory is uh, very important. You know what? And the children of God shall receive the internal glory by our faith. Yeah? How, how do we do that? Huh? The Bible teaches. Huh? Uh, please turn back to Romans chapter 8, verse 17. Romans 8, 17. Here, talk about we shall have the glory with our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? Jonathan, to be sweet. 8.17 And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. We are the children of God because we are baptized. We receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes from that we are children of God. And we, we indeed truly are children, children, children of God. Jesus prepared His kingdom for us. We are heirs. And when we suffer with Him, we will receive glory with Him. So let me ask you, by reading this verse, what is the precondition to receive glory? Suffering. suffering. Do you like suffering? 
Nobody likes suffering. Everybody likes glory. But if you do not have suffering, how can you have glory? If you do not study hard, how can you have a degree? If you do not pray hard, how can you touch Jesus Christ, right? No pain, no gain. Right? Jesus said, Jesus said this, huh? I, I like this. Let's, let's read uh, Luke chapter, chapter 24, verse 26. Chapter 24, verse 26. Teddy, you can speak. Verse 24, 26. I'm not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Ah. Uh, in Chinese, it's not right. Is that, it, 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 is it not right? 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 The Christ will suffer and then you will enter into the story. So this is a natural process, yeah? So, again, no pain, no pain. No. So we need to suffer with our Lord Jesus Christ. But how can we suffer with our Lord Jesus Christ? How do you, as your age, suffer with our Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, turns. Turn. How do you suffer with our Lord Jesus Christ? Hmm? Yeah. How? A lot of ways, I guess. But I would say being Christian, suffering ways. Think so? It's too general. Be more specific. Uh, How do you suffer with our Lord Jesus Christ? You know, to be close. his disciple. Huh? To be his disciple. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coming to NYDS, right? You suffer, then you. Besides coming to NYDS, what else? How do you suffer so you can have glory? Huh? Resist temptation. Yeah. Huh? Is resist temptation a suffering? Yes, it is a suffering. So we shall suffer with the Lord in order to get it. Yeah? How do we suffer with the Lord? I mean, I know there's many things you, 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 can, you can think about. How do you suffer with the Lord? But not, not, you, you, you want to suffer with the Lord. But how do you do that? Because it is not easy. Yeah? How, how do you, 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 can, you, can, you, can, you, know, you can make sure you do this? Let's turn to Romans chapter 8. I think this is the key, yeah? 8 verse 18. You need to do comparison. 8, 18. If you truly understand these truths, you can do that, no? Huh? Roger, would you please read? Verse 18. Verse 18. I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory of God and should be the us. Brother and sister, you can't compare but if, if, if you truly can, you know, if you, I know it's very suffering. I know it's very suffering uh, for you like to resist temptation right now, right? But you can truly compare with the suffering and the future glory. You understand, future glory is so wonderful that you can temporarily sustain your suffering. The Bible gives us some comparison, huh? Number one. Use the hand to compare. The suffering is what? It's present, huh? Yeah? Is it? And the glory is what? What? Future. Well, we don't like this. I, we, we like our present. We like our glory now, right? <laughs> we don't like future. But it's not a damn comparison, no? Let's turn to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. It's not a comparison. Uh, tell us, please read. What? Our uh, affliction is what? For a moment? For a moment, and this one, eternal. Yeah? But if you think about it, even though it's present, right? But the suffering is only for, for a short time. Do you think that time fly past? Time fly fast? Suddenly you are so old already, yeah? <laughs> I'm serious, I, I think I see some of you from Toronto. 
I cannot remember your name, but I remember your face. Thank you, <laughs> thank you your sister. Like, uh, what is your name? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember your face, yeah? When, you, when, when, when we first meet, you guys go to uh, this bus for SSC, yeah? So small, yeah, so little. And now you're in college already. I say, wow, like Jonathan and, 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 and Raymond. I say, you are here already? He said, what is, you know? Really so old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so old. I mean, time really flies. See, maybe you suffered something in the past, but suddenly you are so old already. You are, let's say, 70 years old, but in the blink of eyes, you will become 70 years old. <laughs> scary, yeah. Very scary, isn't it? Like, like, no matter how much you suffer, it's really for a short moment. But think about the eternity. So it's from from infinity from, in, from infinity to infinity. You can say it that way. If you one this side, yeah, right? Is it infinity this side? From infinity to infinity. Think about how 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 long it is. The glory. How long it is? In comparison. And you can build this weight, yeah? The suffering is what? Hey, that time is, which I read that was, read it again. My, 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 it's light. The suffering is light, and here it's heavy, yeah? Heavy. So if you can feel about it, you notice that, oh, then it's worth, it's worth, uh, worth it for us to suffer with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, who say this? Who say this? Who say those words? Paul. Paul. How, did, how did Paul know that this is, this is so good? How did he know? Huh? He went to the third heaven, yeah? Paul did not say this word with, without any evidence. He went to the third heaven and he, he see that, oh, that place is, in the spirit, you can see that, oh, that place is so wonderful. Paul wrote so many books, but he cannot find a term describe the goodness of heaven, heavenly kingdom. He cannot find any word he can, he can use to describe heavenly kingdom. Far beyond better, far beyond better. But Paul, in his life, what did he do? What did he suffer in his life? How many times he has been beaten? Huh? How, how many times he has been whipped? Forty times minus one. How many times he has been what? Forty times minus one. How many times he has been stoned? One time. How many times he has been... Uh, how many times his uh, ship has been uh, wrecked? His uh, ship broken? Three times. How many times he was uh, uh, floating in sea? It cost one hour. He left me three times she break it. It was easy. It, can you, you, you use, our, you use our generation's word to describe Paul? Think that Paul has been at uh, air, airplane crash for three times. <laughs> Paul has been uh, 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 kissed the bullet once. <laughs> yeah, he got stoned. Right? Nobody stoned anymore. Everybody bing, bing, bing. No, no more stoned. Right? <laughs> so, you, you know, the stone is like that. And even though after he got stone and, 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 and shipwreck, or nowadays it's air, airplane crash, got saved, he says that the suffering is short and light. And he went to the heavenly kingdom. It's far better. So he did not say this without, without experiences. That's what I'm trying to say. So you are able to sustain the suffering now in NYDS, temptation, whatever, yeah? Because you are looking forward to that future glory. Let's continue reading Paul's uh, opinion. Let's turn to our verse, Romans chapter, chapter 8. Chapter 8 is that I consider, I think, you consider, you think, because here's the experience, yeah? Uh, verse 18, oh, the suffering compared with the future glory, nothing mind. Don't worry about it. Verse 19, I think we're reading it. Alex. <laughs> Expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the Son of God. Twenty, talk about the suffering. Twenty, for 
humiliation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who was subjected to hope, subjected in hope. See, you live and live, our suffering is that we live under vanity. Why? Because Adam sinned. The world has been cursed. We live in this cursed world. So everything becomes fertile. Uh, so that's why Solomon said, uh, 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 vanity, 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 everything is vanity. Huh? Sometimes we do not imagine, we, we cannot imagine how beautiful is God's creation. Huh? Uh, uh, an elder went to Hawaii with me. Huh? And we went to Maui. And we are... We went out, we are patrolling. We went to the needle. EL needle. Huh? EL needle. EL needle, yeah? We were walking on the trail. And by the e, uh, EL. EL. EL needle. EL needle, there were some <coughs> wild guava. And when, when the elder saw that, well, because our, our elder, this elder is very interesting. He, uh, he, uh, he is paid, paid much attention to eating. He was. He will not eat meat, he only eat, eat you know, vegetable stuff, yeah? So he, he saw what go, he saw, he was so glad, right? He said, wow, there's no, uh, there's no chemical, yeah? Everything's nature, so eat it. And he, I, I, I buy one and eat it, I said, wow, this is so sour. He said, oh, but this is good, yeah? And he started giving me a concept, he said, look at the environment over here. This environment is cursed, because the whole earth is cursed, yeah? Including Hawaii is cursed, yeah? <laughs> But look at Hawaii, how beautiful this place is. You go there, it's indeed a very beautiful land. You guys are lucky to live over there. Even the land has been cursed. It is still so beautiful. Can you imagine that a land that has not been cursed? How beautiful that Garden of Eden is. I said, yeah, that is true, yeah? That is true. So, at the, at the human being got seen, we are cursed. We are cast out from that kind of Eden. Hawaii is still so beautiful. But even though you live in Hawaii, right, you still feel what? Vanity. Because God make everybody, at the sin, live under vanity. If people is living without God. Oh. Full time, let's talk about the suffering. No matter how, how much you get, you get your degree, you get a lot of money, you get a good spouse in the future, everything later on, without God, everything. You find out that everything is vanity. You know? Fertile. Fertile. Few times. That's uh, please read verse twenty-two. Uh, Alex, verse 22. this is suffering we are talking about. Huh? Yeah. Verse twenty-two. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors, its birds gangs together into night. All creation, including now, now we are, all creation was was growing, was laboring, was sighing. Really, I mean, after I'm thinking of birds and dogs and lions. In the garden, either they are much happier than now, nowadays. You think so? You think so? Birds in the garden, either have no fear. Nowadays, does the birds fear you? Birds scare of you, yeah? Birds in the, can you imagine that when, when, when Adam was over, when standing over there? Birds will come and sing to him. He's not afraid of Adam at all because he knows that Adam will never kill it. But nowadays, is there a bird there to see you? To see you, you catch it and. Yeah? Yeah, yeah? Nowadays, animals are living in frightened. Think about it, in the, in the flood, all the animals got destroyed, not only human beings, huh? So animals, all the creation are suffering with human beings too. So every, all the creation are growing. This is our suffering we are talking about. But now, this is what you can see. But then the Bible continues to talk about the future glory, huh? <laughs> Alex, please read. Uh, verse uh, 21. <clears throat> You know what? One day we will get rid of this corruption. We will enjoy that glory. Verse 24, 20, 23. For 24. Oh, so actually, I know some of you will feel like, oh man, you know, you know, even though we are Holy Spirit, yeah, but still we live under suffering and labor, toil and labor. Even though we have hope, of, we have help of Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ said, did not ask 
ask us to live aside from the world. We still live in the world. And in the world, there are difficulties, and we are not exempt. So you see, Christians also have cancer. Christians also have car accident. Christians also will sh shot by guns accidentally and die. All the suffering you see that occur to Gentile people occur to you and to me too. Your family member, like, listen to your testimony. Some of you also struggling to have lunch to eat when you go to school when you were young. It all applies to everybody. Right? So really, a lot of people is hoping one day the Lord Jesus will come and we can live in that immortal, immortal world. I, I, I know a sister. She is old already. At that time, she, I think she was 80 years old. One day when she was in the bathroom, yeah, she collapsed. And nobody know that she collapsed. She like lost her, she like, what? Not lost consciousness, she's not aware of it. And, and suddenly a wind blow by, she wake up. She has been lying on the bathroom for four hours already. And nobody know. She was crossing her teeth suddenly. Four. And after she wake up, she was crying. Huh? We asked her, why are you crying? Is it, do you cry because nobody uh, know that you are here because all your family members are working? She said, no, I'm not crying for that. I am crying that why the Lord allow me, why the Lord do not allow me to continue in that stage so I can go back home. I need to return back and continue to live in this world. I said, wow, what kind of phrase is this? Amazing, yeah? The old sister is looking forward to that glory stage that he can be our Lord Jesus Christ. Because indeed, if a person die, he rested with his labor. Huh? He, he rested with his labor. Human being, to live this world, to a lot of toil and labor, too much troublesome. Huh? So uh, a lot of people is looking forward to that glory to come. Now, <clears throat> if we truly hope for that glory, the Bible says that we need to wait in patience. Huh? What does it mean by patience? Let's read Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, 14, verse 12. Joe, would you please read? Fourteen, verse 12. So the patience shows that you keep commandments of God and the truth of Jesus Christ. Huh? So your brother says, I know that sometimes you are very, you are very suffering too. Yeah? Maybe it's mentally, maybe it's a family, maybe it's other things that in your life. But please, we have hope of glory. You have you need to be patient to keep the words of God. When you go patient, you have to do with the commandments of God. Huh? To continue to be a good Christian no matter what. Uh, no matter what. Even people put a gun under, under your head. No. Do you want to be a quick Christian? What did you say? You need patient. What would you say? <laughs> you will be a good Christian. No, it's, this is a true story. I'm not asking you. You all hear the uh, Fargo story. Fargo. Fargo. The high school in Fargo. Huh? <laughs> It's a Red Lake, Red Lake in Fargo, Red Lake. The high school shooting. You hear the story? No? What is that? I think I shared with some of the provinces in Southern California. It's in Fargo, yeah? Yeah, the, the high school the high school student. The, the, the big guy, the big guy, have like two homes of table, yeah? yeah? And wear black, yeah? How do you call it? That kind of church called? Wear black pants, black shoes, and took a gun to the school. Right? Remember that story? And the Irene comes in the exam. There was a classroom, yeah? And uh, the teacher asked everybody to go to the back and touch yourself, hide, yeah? And there, there was a guy, of course, the girl, hey, you hide behind me, hide behind me. Oh. And the, the girl, like, uh, gave up her eyes, and her eyes just touched with the killer's eyes, yeah? And feel, she has a chilly feeling, yeah? And the eyes are, uh, <coughs> she has a position and, he, and he, she hide behind another boy. And then when the big guy came in, the teacher talked to that big guy. You know, tried to calm, calm him down and say, the Lord be with us. The Lord be with us, yeah? And 
this, this guy cannot believe it. No, he has a table at home. Bam! The teacher just shoot, the teacher gun. And then he turned his gun to another boy. Do you believe in Jesus? What did he say? No. So he turned his gun away. Bam, 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 bam. Four people died. Suddenly that, that girl who was hiding behind a boy felt like oh, some warm feeling and wet feeling on her gym. Yeah? You, you look at it. It's the blood of the guy who protected him. In front of him, that guy got shot. Got was shot. When I read that story, of course, it was a very sad story. But I start to think about one question: Did that boy come to your classroom and be born to come here at your head? Now it's your turn. Do you want to believe in Jesus? What is your answer? He you said no. Okay, you see the other person. He said yes. Then you, you, you got right. In that kind of occasion, I don't know what your response will be. But of course, this is a very extreme example. There are a lot of more ordinary examples in our daily life to, 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 to test you. Are you going to be a good Christian or you want to give up on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? No? We can have choose. But the Bible says that we, we have hope of future glory. Hope of future glory. Even the, even the extremists of the Muslim, yeah, they dare to unplug the the bomb and blow themselves up with the other person. But we are not doing that for our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we be more patient, take the suffering for our Lord Jesus Christ? And knowing that we have future glory. This is something that we gotta think about. <clears throat> now how do we uh Now next section we are going to talk about Actually, we are live under grace, yeah? We are pure. Um, God will not leave us to, to obtain the glory alone. When we say we can be glorified, it is live by grace. Huh?